Have Nvidia gone and done it again? Will they ever learn? At this point, it doesn't seem like it. In potentially trying to pass off one GPU as another and then charging you more for it. We saw it with the 4070 Ti, 4080 edition, and now history may repeat itself with the RTX 4070, 4060 Ti edition. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I'm never gonna be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. Okay, so I was probably a bit sensationalist with that introduction, but I'm just trying to say what we're all feeling. And I like to consider myself as the voice of the consumer, man of the people. And luckily I have a platform to speak from in the hope that we all get our voices heard. And memory sizes is once again, the talk of the town when it comes to GeForce based GPUs. We all know that lower end RTX 40 series cards are coming, though entirely kind of what order, well, we don't really know. Could the 4070 be next, or could it fall upon a 4060 Ti? Or maybe even something in between that leaves consumers confused and angry again, much like we saw when the 4080 12 gig was cancelled, thanks to the huge uproar that gamers had. Though not that it made a huge difference, as the 4070 Ti was still about $100 overpriced, and the 4080 isn't exactly, well, selling in the droves that was expected by Team Green. Especially as Nvidia are reportedly halting production, albeit temporarily, of the RTX 4090 in the hope that more people will actually buy the RTX 4080. This isn't uncommon and something we have seen kind of happen time and time before, but it still goes to show the state of the market right now and that gamers aren't exactly flocking to buy the latest and greatest, at least as part of the Ada Lovelace family I mean. So what has this all got to do with memory? Well, much like the RTX 4080 12 gig that ended up life as a still somewhat overpriced RTX 4070 Ti, last week information was found on Gigabyte's website regarding the RTX 4070's memory. And interestingly, they found three different memory options, a 10 gig variant, a 12 gig variant, and a 16 gig variant. This is interesting as a 16 gig variant would actually put it higher than the 4070 Ti, which only has 12 gig. Unless we'll see a similar situation to the 3060 and 3060 Ti, where the lower skewed GPU actually packs more memory, giving it an edge in certain titles where memory was more important than raw compute power. Or as mentioned, maybe Nvidia will try and pull the same trick with the 4080 12 gig and try and sell us a 4060 Ti disguised as a 10 gig variant of the 4070. I sure hope not because consumers had already lost a lot of faith in Nvidia and this really won't help their case and will show kind of how completely out of touch they are with the target demographic. Also, what's interesting is that the RTX 4080 12 gig is still listed on the site. So these SKUs are simply because the specs exist, though may not all make it to market anyway. Whatever ends up coming to market, the pricing will have to be, well, spot on to give it any chance of gamers actually buying them. Because the last couple of releases from both AMD and Nvidia have just been slightly off the mark and they both really need to listen to what gamers actually want. Now, speaking of AMD, last week we saw Geekbench and Blender benchmarks of the 7950X3D, AMD's upcoming 7000 series flagship 3D vCache based CPU. And while it didn't exactly look great, it was kind of expected, much like how the 5800X3D performed worse than its non X3D counterpart in productivity based tasks. And well, anything that wasn't gaming related, mainly due to the slight chop in base clock speed between them. Obviously gaming is where it matters and this week we finally have something that shows what we all wanted to know, how it performs in gaming benchmarks and how it compares to the Intel Core i9-13900K, where it ends up coming in around 6% faster. Now leaks from the Brazilian site HD Technologia shows the two CPUs tested with both the AMD's flagship Radeon 7900 XTX and Nvidia's RTX 4090, along with 6000MHz DDR5 memory, really leaving no argument for bottlenecking. 
Now, when paired with the 7900XTX, the 7950X3D gained a 5.6% average over Intel at 1080p, with some instances of it gaining a margin as high as 21% in F1 and 26% in Horizon Zero Dawn. Though taking them out of the equation, most games performed around 6-8% better at most, with some titles actually performing worse. When tested with Nvidia's RTX 4090, the 7950X3D managed to perform I guess slightly better with an average 6% increase in performance over Intel, as well as a much larger 16% over its non-X3D counterpart. Again, F1 and Horizon Zero Dawn saw some massive 25-27% to margins over Intel, but it doesn't paint the full picture. What does paint a better picture is no matter if you're using a 7900XTX or RTX 4090, you'll be getting 5-6% to better performance over Intel, but for 18% more money. Is it worth that? That's really down to the individual consumer. Alongside these AMD benchmarks, another leaker has shown similar benchmarks on Twitter, but instead with an RTX 3090. The leaker didn't provide any further system specs beyond the 3090, but showed off their multi-threaded Cinebench score as well as five gaming benchmarks, further reinforcing the 7950X3D as outperforming the 13900K. What's also interesting is that while both of these leaks pit the 7950X3D against the 13900K, so does the leaked AMD slide, showing anywhere from an 11% loss to the Intel CPU all the way up to that 20% plus high in Horizon Zero Dawn and F122. But that's not the interesting part. What I'm wondering is, where's the 13900KS, which typically offers up around 5-6% to more gaming performance than the 13900K in a lot of titles, which would ironically pit it perfectly against the 7950X3D. Even more so because it comes in with the same $699 price tag. Maybe AMD know that they will actually lose against it and that's why it's not been shown anywhere. Maybe we'll look to do some kind of head-to-head -head showdown between the two CPUs if AMD bothered to send us one. Or maybe we'll buy one so that we can bring that content directly to you. And if you want to help us on that front, you can over on Patreon. The link is down below. That way we don't have to rely on the likes of AMD to bring the content that maybe they aren't exactly keen to show you. Now I don't want to finish this video without giving a fair shake to every brand, and that's where Intel Arc comes into play. While it's not exactly had the best start to its life, things are getting better with driver updates that have actually seen it making strides to become a viable option for those on a budget, something that both AMD and Nvidia have seemingly forgotten about as of late. While they both strive for the very high end, admittedly where they can make more profit per sale. Now what we've seen is that Intel have had an influx of stock, namely on the ARC A750 arrive within the UK and the rest of Europe. Now the A750 is now available at £249, which is actually a good deal, especially for a card competing with the RTX 3060, which goes for a little over £300 depending on the model you're looking at. Now it's not all clear sailing, as while stock is available, there's still room for improvement, but at least with driver updates, it's heading in the right direction. And it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, I don't know, Intel maybe did a relaunch of their ARC lineup in the hope of receiving some favourable press coverage. Though when that might be is, you know, anyone's guess. And that about does it for this video. Clearly, based on the last news roundup, you guys enjoyed the content, so hopefully you did with this one too. If you do appreciate these types of videos, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and want to help us by supporting us to bring you the very best and most unbiased content possible, then consider supporting us over on Patreon. You'll get access to a whole host of goodies, including behind the scenes content, monthly live Q&A sessions, and of course, it gives us the ability to go out and buy products that you, know, you wanna see reviewed. The link for all that good stuff is down below. Thanks for tuning in, I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.